I'll lead in. Here we go. Hello everybody and welcome to game two of our second series today. Uh, it is currently Aimstrong versus Theodosius and on the north side of Crossing in the Woods, Theodosius is playing as USF. And Aimstrong is playing as his preferred faction, Wehrmacht, in the south. A lot of people that struggled to transition into Company Heroes 2 have always still liked the Wehrmacht because it reminds them so dearly of uh, Uncle Wehrmacht from Company Heroes 1. And uh, so he's a fish in water right now. He's playing as the Wehrmacht on Crossing in the Woods done. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good position to be in. And uh, as we saw, Wehrmacht very strong Crossing in the Woods. They were in the last game under Theo. But uh, Theo played very well. Uh, do I want to say that it was because he was playing Austere? Uh, no, no, I don't actually. I think he just played very, very well uh, yeah, against right Armstrong Soviets. So interesting to see how this one goes. Uh, USF, I think, are you know when Momo played USF, USF are kind of glass cannons on this map. If Theo decides yep. to rush in very quickly at the start and try and you know get a killing blow, he might find he leaves himself with no map control. If he plays too slowly, he might find that he doesn't kind of rise up in power quick enough to match. Ooh, it's a tough gamble with USF. It is, it is, uh, it is a tough gamble. Aimstrong is on the back foot right now. We'll all remember the OCF final where Dev and beat Aimstrong in a forty-minute classic on Arnhem checkpoint in game one of the grand final. Then Aimstrong came back in game two and won in nine minutes as Wehrmacht. He can be a very aggressive Wehrmacht player with that MG when he wants to be. So uh, it's, uh, it's something to be mindful of as a viewer and us as casters right now that uh, there is that early game potential. I think one of the good things I've seen today, uh, I don't know if you've maybe picked up on this, a lot of the play with the MG has been good. There's always been engineers near the snipers or the MGs for sight. Um, and I have been kind of flicking the fog and uh, war on and off so people can kind of see uh, how it's being spotted. Uh, sorry, the units are being spotted before any of those units can spot the MG. And it, it, it's really good. The suppression is, is brutal. Um, it's, you know, it's playing the map really, really well. Talking about playing the map really well though, Theodos is very, very early on has gone for a brutal cutoff, uh, but he is at risk of being flanked on the retreat path. It could be an excellent yes. opportunity to set up. And where's this MG now? It is indeed on the retreat path, having already set up. Theodos is starting to mitigate the situation though. There's a bit of damage for you. However, the MG is now about to be flanked, so it seems like Theo got the better of that situation. I think the MG placement could have been better, actually. Mm. Don't know whether he's predicting the retreat path was going to go north, but uh, it always goes in through the road, so... Surprised that he set up in that direction. Perhaps he's not familiar with all of that yet, because you know there's players like Lovenest who... who very much know every retreat path uh, from every location, so... Maybe he doesn't have any. Two things to very quickly point out in chat. Rosbon Mako has said game stats are on the brackets. Very cool. Huge thanks to Yan252. He's done a superhuman effort in creating this website for our tournament this year. Uh, amazing. Uh, second thing, is Rotlick involved with this tournament? Yes, they're supplying GTX 1080s that uh, the first place player will win. And you yourself in chat has chance to win if you donate $40 to the GCS. You can enter the Benefactor tournament and you'll also be entered into a raffle to win said graphics card. So they are helping, and they're also paying for our IT costs at the event. So very cool of them. Thank you. Back to the game. Yep, back to the game. Nothing crazy happening at the moment. Um, Theo's playing USF carefully. He's gone for Lieutenant. So do you think we'll see something like the M20? Yes, that's been in the build well, straight away. And oh, I, nice. do, I do like it, and the, actually one of the reasons I like it is uh, Aimstrong is kind of slow to tier 2, and I think, you know, actually if he micros the M20 very well, keeps it out of Faust range, then uh, he could probably get some value out of it. Yeah, he probably could. It's, um, it's a good unit for this map because of how wide the map is, but uh, it's not a unit I fancy to be a huge killing unit. Well, then again, it doesn't cost much, so it's mostly about harassment and just doing a bit of manpower attrition over time. 
but it'll also deter the sniper if he doesn't fancy coming up against that Vet3 sniper again, because I think uh, Aimstrong Sniper Users was a little bit sharper than Theo's in that last game. Overall, in terms of, you know, killing, we, we all know he died, so that's not great, but uh, in terms of getting kills, it was good. So it I also deters that. I'm sensing that Theo is uh, pressured at the moment. He sent two units off in very, very weird locations and clearly wasn't paying attention. They took a lot of unnecessary model wipes and, and pushes where there was no guarantee of winning the engagement. So you can see with the lieutenant here, like, where's the lieutenant going? Like, run, running into the hedgerow. What is he doing? It, oh, it's, it's, like, uh... it's like he set up a lot of commands, do you know what I mean? And just kind of forgot about everything. Maybe that's how he plays. He just like, maybe he's gone for a, a toilet break or something. Lieutenant, has, or Lieutenant rather, has made it into the building. I call it Lieutenant because that's how the Americans say it. If it was a German, it'd be a Lieutenant. If it was a Brit, it'd be a Lieutenant. It's a very small nomenclature for you there, Daniel. How is it possible for so many languages to say this differently? <laughs> well, the French spelt it, so I think that uh, explains oh, no. it now. <laughs> of course. <laughs> And twenties now here. He's got his uh, skirts on, and he's ready to kill some Germans. Be an opportunity for a rifle grenade here if uh, Ingstrom wants to go for it. Not going to take the risk with the echelons. I hope he pays attention to these echelons. One of the big mistakes we saw with USF previously was that the echelons were played carelessly and died. Then there was no mine sweeping. And uh, as we saw, like with Momo, that was the end of his uh, Stuart. We know that we know that Aimstrong will plant telemines like that in, in very good places. Mine sweeping is essential. The uh, Sonderkrop Farsoig. It's 500 fans. Fansig about to hit the field. There we go. So Aimstrong's going for the meta right now. He's uh, decided to forgo his 251 flame half track on this map and instead elect for a scout car. I think that's a good idea. Rifle oh, goes in. Right. Well done! What? It dodged it all! Absolutely eviscerated on retreat by Aimstrong there. Great rifle grenade. That was actually planned on the retreat slightly as well. So as they retreated and the models bunched up, maximum benefit. I was going to suggest that. So you think he definitely uh, he planned it on retreat? Because in yes. which case, that's excellent. Yeah. Absolutely excellent. I, level skills, I think uh, a lot of players build. do plant them slightly on the retreat, you know, just so that you'll either clip the unit or you'll get it square on as it retreats. But because uh, yeah. most people aren't watching the engagement dead on, but it, nevertheless, I mean, it, I think that's, I think that was very, very well placed. It was. It's, uh... I'm not sure if it's just me as well. I do feel like uh, when the models retreat, they bunch together as they retreat, so you kind of yes. have a more, more opportunity to get that wipe. Well, they all follow the same algorithm, the same line to base, so uh, it's almost like they start on the waypoints and like run to a point first before everything. Almost, it's like that. Um, this game is uh, in the balance right now. They've both got very similar victory point counts. Uh, in terms of squad wipes, we all know that Aimstrong just got a squad wipe, and he himself hasn't lost anything of note quite yet. So he has a, a distinct advantage in terms of, uh, of manpower there. So we could start to see that take effect. And just like in that last game, Dan, he's now getting the sniper out to try and uh, put exclamation points on that exclamation mark. That will be quite significant, really, because he's already not winning the infantry engagements. And the M20 already doesn't have line. To, uh, to go and dive deep, so actually the, the sniper's going to be pretty intense pressure, I think, against USF. And there's such uh, high-value models as well. Uh, quite costly. I mean, this is a huge investment into Tier 1. Though. A huge hmm. investment into Tier 1. I mean, he has to make this work, because his reinforcement costs are high. If, if, you know, if the engagements uh, don't go his way, he's going to have a lot of reinforcements cost and slower teching as the game goes on. 222 is um, just holding ground right now, keeping that rifleman at bay. However, doesn't have any veterancy, so can't really hope to achieve anything by standing there and getting shot at. Likewise, retreats into the loving arms of the three-quarter ton ambulance. We're going to play a game of 28 with the Wehrmacht Sniper today. Every kill he gets against the Lieutenant, and a Rifleman is worth 28 manpower. 
So, so far he has zero kills, which is zero manpower. And I'll keep you updated as the game continues. already got one kill, just ah, then. there we go. That's 28 manpower. He, have, he himself costs 360, which divided by 28 means he needs to get 13 kills to pay for himself, which is something I've been talking about in Company Heroes cast for the past six years. And, uh, yes. It's still the meta, even now. <laughs> Good things don't need to change, I think. It's, uh... well, I nearly did, but, uh... <laughs> they nearly did. The original patch notes that were leaked had uh, the snipers having 1.5 aim time rather than 1 aim time. It's like a 50% increase in their ability to kill. Rifle aid on the east side does nothing, Dan. It didn't do a thing. Not any health damage, not any models. This is coming here to at its finest. Will it kill the whole squad? Will it kill a model? Nobody knows. Yeah, he's certainly making use of them though. I actually think they're oh. very, very useful. Oh, at the man. very least, they're great at forcing the retreats. MG goes down, and uh, that yeah. was in no doubt uh, with the aid of the rifle grenade. So don't write it off just yet. It's, uh, it's not a dead cert. It will be effective. But for the times it is, it's well worth it. Definitely. And um, it is all about uh, cover and grouping. And uh, how this, how the AOE is simulated as the lieutenants rush straight in. It's going to get hit by the sniper. It's going to... Oh, that could have been a wipe, you know, if 2-2-2 two, two, two had somehow magically managed to get one kill there. I'm not sure why he's taking the scout car back against the M20. I'm pretty sure he wins that engagement. Seemed to be scared of something. Quite close, actually. It's quite close. So, there's, as, you, as you say, the 2-2-2 two, two, two can't tank the damage as much, but it does a slightly more DPS. And then, of course, the... The M20 shots are less fast. Yeah, you're about right. It's probably about even. It's one of those things that's very finely balanced, though. It's uh, RNG just come into effect a little bit. Big shout out to iCab today, who uh, had a huge showing as um, a, a low seed in this tournament against a high seed and won a game against Helping Hands. Uh, good show, old sport. Well played. Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, to, to put that kind of pressure on hands uh, right in the first round is... Um, I think other players will be thanking him for that because it's the kind of thing that knocks your confidence right at the start. It is, yep. Um, you, know, you, you don't want to be uh, an expected you know, top four, <laughs> you know what I mean, struggling in the early rounds. Um, that being said, you know, every, every player can be surprised. Fair play to you. Okay. Indeed, indeed. But the uh, it's a m very much a, a drawn battle lines World War One style game right now. They've they've drawn a line and they're not going any further. This is our territory. That's your territory. Let's just take pot shots at one another. And that's pretty much how the battle's evolving. I think we're waiting for tier three to be built and all the first call in vehicle to come onto the field to really open things up a little bit and uh, set this the flames alight. I'm just a little confused about okay Theo's going for the major uh aim strong he's tech to battle phase two will he will he stay there was he i think maybe he's waiting just for mobile defense just if he needs it because he's kind of in that window of time where it might get picked but uh Theo's really late really on resources really proud moment Dan. i've literally got a uh tears welled welled up in my eyes when i saw that we hit twelve thousand us dollars for gcs2 uh, wow. Big thanks to recent donations. Um, there are a few anonymous ones that got us there, so whoever you are, thank you. Uh, but Hair Padre, uh, Boomt D Boots, and Oslgar, Kura here earlier today. Uh, big thanks to all of you. Every single penny is going to go into creating the biggest and best tournament we've ever had. And uh, thanks to everybody tuning in today and sharing in that. That is really impressive. It's uh, pretty, pretty epic. Um, the, the the funding we have slated that we we will we do look likely to want to cut it off at 14k, uh, but to be honest, the event's pretty much paid for now. It's all about adding quality and improving the experience for everybody there at the weekend. I believe we can fly all eight players there now, um, hopefully, unless we get like somehow J for Jet and uh, same another American Dan, <laughs> Von Ivan, Von Ivan, and some, somebody else like three Americans flying in, maybe even more difficult. All honesty, it's now just adding quality, like buying beers for everybody and uh, making sure everybody's got, you know, somewhere to sleep, uh, stuff like that. 
We just saw a unit has gone down there. Enemy done what I'm not sure on which territory. unit went down there. Uh, Work it out. Grenadiers? I think it was Grenadiers, yeah. yeah I think I'm sure. Just yeah, it looks, looks, looks like it. That's the first squad loss for Aimstrong. He's down to three now. He's got the Panzer IV about to hit the field, and that's the thing that will open this game back up. Ooh, M20 mine in a very good place. Got a good opportunity to lay that there. This is a good move from Theo. Um, if he actually starts to put pressure on the right hand side, he could draw the Panzer IV when it comes on the field. He doesn't know this, but. Panzer IV is about to hit. M20, his days are numbered. I'd like to see that he's using infantry awareness with the scout car. That's really. Uh... Just to it's give a great little tool. Yeah. Just to give Stern Tiger good. Sorry, Dan, to keep drawing our attentions away from the game. But Stern Tiger Daffy's in chat. He wants a five-star hotel when he arrives. And entrance music, he's mentioned to me. I mean, he's he's a one thousand dollar benefactor, so we'll see what we can do. But uh, obviously, well, you know, within within our scope. But uh, one thing he is doing, Dan, is the Coco Jambo Award, and I think we'll give this a proper uh, the, the attention it deserves later in the cast. Uh, I think you've got some stuff set up for that. Really. I do, yeah, yeah. I think that we can explain between games because uh, oh yes, absolutely. we'll be looking for things to talk about. And also, all these games require you know the amount of respect that they <laughs> that they deserve. I see what you're trying to say. I see what you're trying to say. I'm just trying to save myself for the, the, the truly hard quarterfinal match we got late today. And uh, but let's just give some respect to Theo where he deserves. He's currently getting pushed back by Aimstrong. Aimstrong started to gather pace and uh, recoup his forces and he's looking a lot, uh, I don't want to say it, but stronger. He's looking a lot stronger. He's looking better, yeah. Um, but I think, as I said, there's uh, there's telemines on the right-hand side. Aimstrong doesn't have minesweepers, so there is always that opportunity that uh, you know, could pull out. He's actually gone for the Sherman. I was wondering if he'd get a Jackson and continue to try and win the infantry engagement. Yeah. I'm not sure if the Sherman is a good idea, to be honest. Also, there's a pack 40 down, so a pack 40 that's fresh out, by the way. So, this Sherman's playing into Aimstrong's hands. Theo Shots, who's often for, you know, called out for his great strategies and great uh, game sense and winning games, despite not being very aggressive at times. Um, unfortunately for him, he seems like his one of his best suits is not being played to its full potential right now. Aimstrong has just uh, brought out. Pioneers, there we go, he's actually bringing on the hazard removal package for Minesweepers now. Um, okay. So that's that's good actually, good, good game sense from him, he knows that he's uh, got a weak spot. And I think that's the really good thing, is that he, he knows what his weaknesses are on the field. He knows what his opponent could be taking advantage of, love it. Sherman's on the field, pretty useless at the moment. M20 just suffered a Faust, it's going to be pushed away. And uh, it's rare that a medium tank would hit the field and the cast is uh, a little bit, oh, it's useless. But it is, it's, it's hard countered by the pack 40 and Panzer 4 combination. So it won't be able to really push in where it's mattered most. And he's already got the M20 that's been doing the peripheral work on the flanks. Um, so in all honesty, uh, it, it looks likely that Aimstrong could be in a position to steamroll this game and just continually build. Because, Dan, I think Theo needs a Jackson or something better um, to really get back into things. I mean, there's nothing to say he won't get a Jackson. He's got a pretty good composition, I think, uh, especially now that he's brought the mortar in as well. He managed to jump the, the crew out of the M20, so he's got bazookas on them. He's got bazookas on the echelons. I'd say, actually, he's got a decent amount of anti-vehicle. Uh, the mortar will be picking away at the support weapons, can provide smoke. And maybe the reason he got the Sherman was actually just to help with the infantry because he feels he has enough anti-tank from uh, you know from things like the the echelons. Maybe that's the reason why, but we'll see how it goes. Picked uh, he's picked heavy cavalry, so I'm not 100% sure he will even go for a Jackson anymore. Yeah, Pershing. Pershing is the other option, of course. A nice rifle made on the uh, MG gun, the Panzer IV, covering for the Grenadiers. It retreats back to base, only one model lost. Meanwhile. Uh, Herm and the sharpshooters now past the 13 uh, manpower threshold, getting himself to those that 14th kill, which is of course 392 manpower eviscerated from Theo's tally. Oh, great movement there! The pack gun 
Managing to get a long shot on the Panzer IV. It's actually enough for Aimstrong to want to go in oh, and he gets it! Yes, he gets it with a great with shot! At max range, he did exactly what he needed to do. He smelt blood like a shark in water and he got his uh, just deserves. That was very, very impressive, actually. Uh, the positioning really of that was, was so on edge. And he made a great push at the great time. Theo just didn't get back in time. He didn't move it back far enough. He didn't judge the threat as great enough. But that was an amazing play. I'm just, it's a shame I said just desserts instead of just desserts. I just Googled it and the phrase is just desserts. I didn't want to say that because that sounded silly. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, aim strong with a great play there. That was awesome. A one two punch if I've ever seen one before. Zuko coming here to try and mitigate, but the sniper's waiting for him. Oh, double tally, but uh, and the sniper missed, so I guess it was good after all. I feel like I'm every slow. time we've seen USF today, they've really, really struggled. Um, maybe it's the map, you know, maybe playing USF on this yep. map is... is uh, oh! HLG goes down. And if the Grenadiers grab that, I don't know what Theo can do, to be honest. It's, uh, it's just lost a lot of units, it's throwing things away. And he's trying to decap the fuel. Um, I'm not sure why. There you go, he's actually going to cancel that up. Nice work by the Hunter 4, hunting these riflemen down on retreat. Got a stolen 50 cal now as well, he's strong in the perfect position! Not that it was needed, the whole gunner got the kill, and uh, as I say, I I thought Aimstrom looked like he might steamroll this game now, and uh, nothing has changed my mind about that. It looks like it's his game to lose. Yeah, Theo the started making mistakes. You don't leave units like that that far in, you know, deep into enemy territory when they've got units all along the retreat path. You get out as quick as possible, uh, otherwise that happens. And uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate. Remember, we still have the M20 mine here that hasn't been swept yet. So there's definitely a uh, possibility for stuff still to go wrong. It's just whether or not when it does go wrong, um, Theo is going to be able to capitalize on it. I'm not confident anymore uh, that he will. No. But it looks like he's so. lined up for the bait. I think he's actually lined it up correctly. It's all about that Panzer Sherman, 4 will, will take that path. It will take that path to get there. Also done, that Sherman has delayed the, pan the Pershing now. So if it wasn't for the Sherman, the Pershing would have been out. That could have been comeback material. But as it is, it's uh, not looking too great. You can tell he's trying to bait for it by uh, bringing the... That, that to me would be suspicious, you know, if, if the bazookas yeah. didn't push. That's a suspicious thing to me. Actually, Aimstrong hasn't spotted it. It's going to go over anyway. And uh, if this retreats, you might get out of the M20, try and utilize the uh, the bazooka from the vehicle crew there. Here comes oh. another bazooka, though. <gasps> uh, to obviously counteract the fact that one of his friends has just died. So He's going to trick it. He's, He's going to trip it. There it goes! Panzer oh, 4 is and the down. sniper's out in, in, in the wild as well. The M20 could take that down. I think he will. He's going to go for it. He's going to go for it. There it is. It's down. There you go. And that was the kind of return that we were looking for. That was really, really well played to bait that in. Um, and he's been trying to get that all game. I'm, I'm glad that you managed to get that. Me too. I, I, I love a classic mine uh, switch bait. 2-2-2's come in to take out the glorious M20 there, but they, of course the crew members have a bazooka of their own. Here comes the Panzer IV to rectify the situation. Bazooka rear echelons are waiting for them. M20's been left for Aimstrong to take. Nice. Mm, well, that is unfortunate. I, w I wondered whether he was going to try... Are our yeah, try and blow it up before he left, but I don't think he had the time on the reload you know, to make a, a quick choice there. I mean, Aimstrong's going to repair that, and um, if he's sensible, I think he'd start laying some M20 mines on it. It's probably cheaper than the yep. telemines, I think, isn't it? So um, that's going to be really helpful to him. He's already laying mines like a pro in all the games we've seen. Now to have a mobile unit laying those down, uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I like the noise there, but uh, indeed, he's also got now the 222 and the M20. It's like the un. Uh, the Brothers of uh, Destruction in Tier 2 there really uh, really help him push the flanks and keep Theo at bay. Uh, not that he's not already being kept at bay, of course, because the uh, victory point situation isn't desperate, but it's certainly not looking great. And 
to fall. Shot on retreat, maybe. No, it's going to be okay. Uh, so yeah, it's a tale of two two engagements with Theo there. The excellent mine bait, and then of course losing the M20 straight away after, thanks to the Panzer IV. I don't think he's got it. Uh, I think he can get this game. Vet three scout car as well. Um, the sight's going to be brilliant. Another sniper on the field. Aimstrong wanted to bring that back, so. The kind of synergy that Austria has between the units at this stage of the game, you know, with the, with the veterans he rolling in, and it, it's going to be a really, uh, really potent excellent. combination. So, uh, some news from the Ost front. Uh, Von Ivan beat Stefan BK 2-0. Uh, beats him pretty... Look at the range on that thing! <laughs> is, it, is it long? Yeah. Look at the sight range for the scout car, in serious. Oh yeah, we, we like... saw it with Love Nest and uh, Scott's spotting scopes, I remember. Um, yeah. In SL, I believe, we saw like a map, you could literally see the entire map. Um, but uh, as I was saying, Von Ivan is waiting for the winner of this match. Von Ivan awaits. That tree go. Um, just as well, another point, a really big point by the way, is that uh, Theo won the previous game with 415 victory points. Aimstrong's mission is to win this game with more than 415, so he gets choice of uh, faction on Crossroads, the deciding map. It's a really difficult situation for Theo. It's, um, it's going to make him play really, really hard to try and get those VPs down, and that is going to wear him out for the third game. Yeah, like it is. said, Pershing's on the field. If uh, one okay. unit's going to help the situation, it will be the uh, famous squad wiper. Famous squad Failing wiper. To wipe squads. Red on his uh, dating profile. Male 26 with huge cannon. Six. <laughs> Six squads to wipe, and that's the uh, the Pershing, of course. And uh, it is just excellent. It's, uh, the longer it's on the field, Dan, the more you're going to lose. That's the way to look at the Pershing, because it will just eat up your squads. I mean, look at this poor Grenadier. He's capping up the victory point. Little does he know, imminent death is just around the corner. Ah, and it missed, of course. It hit the wall, but uh, it could have been just around the corner. Just trust me on this. Oh, well, he's kind of backing away with it. Why? What's uh, he got to lose at the moment? He's actually got the repairs on the field as well with the uh, with the vehicle crew and the echelons. I think he's maybe trying to keep it near them. Um, I'm kind of interested. Next mortar round. Watch this. Oh, maybe the first one nearly killed it though. Sorry, Dan. I interrupted you. What were you saying? That's why I was just going to say that uh, whilst he does this, whilst he goes over to the right hand side, um, he leaves himself. In a bit of a position where he can get flanked through the center. I don't think that's the kind of thing you want to be doing against Aimstrong, who now has the munitions for the um, for the JU-87s. So a single snare, and that Pershing is in serious trouble. And that 50 cal watching over the center to insult to injury. On the western side, there's an LMG Grenadier waiting behind green cover. And on the eastern side, he's got uh, two Grenadiers with a, a Panzer Mark IV. In working in perfect unison as a battle group, it looks likely that Theodos is uh, losing this game, and uh, Aimstrong will have faction selection on crossroads. Pershing finally, uh, finally killing something. Aimstrong being a bit ballsy with the sniper there. And, uh, what's he trying to snipe? Is he trying to snipe just the infantry in there? But here we go. This is going to be the uh, the move in on the Pershing. We have the JU-87s in at the moment. And the Where Panzer Force are, are penetrating the frontal armor of the American heavy tank. Here comes the Stukas. Oh, Huge they do so much damage. So much damage as the Panzer Force come around the corner. They're trying to penetrate the frontal armor. They just can't. Theodosius doesn't even want to wait for the <laughs> engagement to finish. He's just going to throw nope. in the towel. It's a BM uh... Uh, not letting your opponent get the satisfaction of killing the tank. And uh, Dan, I'm very keenly uh, aware that the game three has started, and I think if we join join in now, we could probably just start the game. Yeah, I'd, I'd be up. Not for that, that we need breaks. Yeah. yeah, we could probably have like a minute break, but just get in the game, um, and then we can just have it. You know, no rest for the wicked, Dan. Come on, you love this stuff. Matt and I do, Dan, I do casting it. forever. Matt and Dan. <clears throat> I feel like I haven't fun. cast for a while though. It's a bit strange, you know, especially like leaving the King of the Hill. We've done a lot of two v two stuff. I actually find that more relaxing. 
yeah, um, even though there's even good. though it's twice as much work for camera control. <laughs> yeah, but it is more relaxing uh, actually. You feel like you'd be a little more uh, timely with with how you spot things. And this is a, a lot more rigid. Let's let's go for it. Um, there's Lobby. the game. All right, I'm just inviting you now. I'm actually excited to cast Crossroads. We've done a lot of crossing in the woods. Um, mm. Crossing in the resident sleeper. <laughs> to put it bluntly, um, playing the same map over and over is is a real drain on, on casting, to be honest. Yeah, so uh, if anybody's wondering how the brackets work, it's all player... Um player done it's player driven Jan's done it so they upload their replays and then it drives the brackets onwards uh, and they can't advance until they've done that it's uh, tied into a battle planner system it's literally genius uh, and obviously I've worked with him on it on it as well which helps it significantly Dan um, but Jan, Jan did most of the work and all of the coding so big thanks to him again I'm gonna have to stop eventually Dan we can't but you know <laughs> we, can, we can confirm, by the way, that Aimstrong has chosen what you'd think he has chosen in uh, in Game 3, the decider. But, uh, Dan, I'm going to get a quick drink, and then we'll jump straight into this thing. Is that all right? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'll put it on a white screen for a second, because I see the work phone's ringing, so just 